Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and today I'm kicking off a new matching furniture building series. So I'm building an entirely new bedroom set for our guest bedroom and I'm kicking things off with part one of the series, building the bed. I've got the plans for this design in a twin, full, queen and king size in the link in the description below. But if you're ready to see how it all came together, let's go. You can build a bed a million ways and in a million styles, but most of the time the main structure is pretty much the same. You basically just need a head and footboard, two side rails, and some slats or supports for the mattress to rest on. So in this video, I'm breaking this down in these sections to help keep things simple. Let's start with the headboard. I'm usually a pretty straight, clean line kind of person, but in this case, I decided to add a curve here at the top. While this wasn't necessarily difficult, it was quite time consuming and did require a lot of sanding to get things evened out, but we'll get there in a minute. I built this bed from basic two by material and plywood. And to be honest, I would have preferred to use some nicer material for the frame, but prices are crazy and selection in my area is pretty limited and I just didn't have time to order anything. So it is what it is. This worked fine, but obviously you can use any type of wood that you prefer for this. For the headboard curve, I used two by eight material. I planed them first just to barely remove some material from each side to give me a smooth surface. Then I trimmed them down into more manageable lengths and squared off the rounded edges on the table saw. I've detailed the lengths of these pieces in the plans and they'll vary based on the size bed that you're building. But I basically just cut pieces to form a quote unquote U shape. I spaced them out the length that I wanted my curve to be, then made marks to help me keep them lined up as I glued them together. I glued up two of these identical to each other. Now, I drew a template for this curve in SketchUp, took a screenshot of it, put it in a Word document, blew it up to life size, printed it out on a few sheets of paper, taped them together, and then cut it out with scissors. It was pretty rough, and it ended up not being really nice smooth lines. Now, you could freehand your curve, you could use round objects to draw it out, whatever. But in the plans, I've noted the radius of each curve, and if I had to do this again, I would put a screw in a scrap board, clamp this glued up panel to the workbench, and position the screw on the scrap board at the pivot points that I've noted in the plans based on the size bed that you're building. Then I would just use a pencil on a string or this tape measure method to trace out my radius about that screw. This will give you nice, smooth, curved lines versus using the paper template method, and it allows you to customize your curve size if you prefer something a little different. Either way, once the curve shape was drawn, I used a jigsaw to cut it out. You could also use a bandsaw if you'd rather. I used a belt sander to help me smooth things out a little on the edges, then I used this piece to trace my curve onto the second glued up panel and cut it out. These curves will be glued together to give me a three inch thick piece, but before gluing them up, I used the rabbiting bit in my router to cut a rabbit along the inside edge of one of the pieces. I knew I would never be able to perfectly cut a curve on the headboard panel to match the frame. So instead of wasting my time trying, I just cut this rabbit. That way I can slide the top of the headboard panel into it later and not have to worry if it's a perfect matched cut. Since my headboard panel will be three quarter inch plywood, I made multiple passes to cut this rabbit to three quarter inches deep to make sure my plywood would fit into it. Then I glued my curved pieces together so that the rabbit was in the middle. After the glue dried, I used a flush cut bit on my router and my belt sander to get all of these edges nice and flush and smooth. There was a lot of sanding. <laughs> Now the hard part is over and everything else is pretty smooth sailing. I made the headboard legs from two by fours. And if you saw my matching office furniture series, this process looks pretty familiar. I trimmed down my two by fours to a little over 40 inches, then squared the edges off on the table saw so that the boards were just over three inches wide. Then I glued them together. 
After the glue had dried, I ran these through the table saw again to clean up the glue edges and to give me a 3 inch by 3 inch post. Then I trimmed them to the final length of 40 inches. I laid these two posts and the curve out on the floor and used a square to mark some lines at the joints on both the front and the back side. Then I used a dowel jig on these marks to drill dowel holes. If you don't want to use dowels, you can definitely use another joinery method that you feel comfortable with. I used wood glue and dowels to assemble this frame and did some creative clamping to hold it together while the glue dried. To make sure that my headboard legs stayed parallel while the glue dried, I used a 2x4 at the bottom and I just kind of tapped it in at an angle until the legs were the same distance apart at the top as they were at the bottom. Then I let it dry. While the glue dried, I grabbed a sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood and began cutting it down. I ripped two 11 inch strips off the sheet for the side rails of the bed. And I set these aside for now, we'll come back to it. And I cut the remaining piece just wide enough to fit between the headboard legs. Once the headboard frame was dry and all the glue squeeze out was sanded off, I laid this panel on the floor and placed the frame on top of it. I set the inside of the curve about a quarter inch down from the top edge of the panel and traced it out. Then I used a jigsaw to trim about a quarter to three eighths of an inch on the outside of this line. This curve will go up into the rabbit that I cut in the frame, so that's why I cut it a little outside the line here. These edges will be hidden. I drilled three quarter inch pocket holes into the sides of the panel and slid it into the frame so that the top curve slides into the rabbit on the frame. I found it easiest to get this into the rabbit by flipping it upside down, and then once it was in place, I moved it to the workbench to screw it together. It really doesn't matter which side that you make the front and which side that you make the back, but I installed this so that the headboard panel was 3 quarter inch inset from the back edge and 1 and a half inch inset from the front edge. But you could flip flop it if you wanted. And at this point, the headboard section is complete, so I moved to the footboard. For the footboard, I repeated the process of making 3 inch by 3 inch posts from 2 by 4s. I made two long ones for the top and bottom and two shorter ones for the sides. The plans detail the lengths that these should be based on the size bed that you're building. And just like with the headboard, I lay these out on the floor and use a square to mark lines at each joint on both sides. Then I used a dowel jig to drill out the dowel holes at each mark. And again, you can use another joinery method if you prefer. I glued up this frame using wood glue and dowels and had to get a little creative again with the clamps. If you don't have enough long pipe clamps for this, you could use some ratchet straps instead or just use pocket holes and screws to assemble. Once this was dry, I sanded off all the glue squeeze out and cut a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood to fit perfectly inside this frame. I used this scrap piece from a project that I started and changed my mind on, so you'll notice that mine has some shelf pin holes already drilled into it, so just ignore that. I drilled 3 quarter inch pocket holes around the edges, then installed this into the frame so that it was about 1.5 inches inset from the front edge. I used 1 and a quarter inch pocket hole screws to secure it in place. Now, I was installing some furniture feet onto the footboard, so I flipped it upside down and kind of figured out how far in from the edge that I wanted these feet to go. I marked and drilled out a hole on each side to install a threaded insert to screw the feet into. If you're interested, I will link the exact feet and threaded inserts that I used here in the description if you'd like to check them out. Once both feet were on, the footboard was complete and it was time to move on to the side rails. The side rails are probably the easiest part of the entire bed. I mentioned earlier that I cut two strips off the plywood sheet for this and set them aside, so I grabbed those strips and trimmed them to length on the miter saw. Since the top edges of these sides will be exposed, I applied iron-on edge banding to them just to give them a cleaner, smoother look. 
Now, these side rails will need some supports to rest the bed slats on later. So for this, I used some scrap plywood strips that I had in the shop. I didn't have any long enough to run the full length of the side rails, so I just pieced them together, which is fine. I glued and screwed these support pieces along the inside of each side rail so that the top was 7 inches from the bottom edge. Now that all four sides of the bed are made, it's time to put it all together. And I used bed rail brackets for this. There are several styles of bed rail brackets, and this is a new kind that I haven't used before, but they seemed simple enough. I attached the corner piece onto the head and footboard like shown here, the same distance up from the ground. The plans will detail the location of these brackets. Now, I'm pretty sure these are intended to go the other way, but if I flipped them, it would push the side rails further apart and leave way too much wiggle room on each side of the mattress. So I installed them so that the teeth were flush to the inside of the frame. Now, my camera battery died in the process of filming this, so I didn't actually get any footage of attaching the other part to the side rails, but I simply screw them in along the edges of the side rail supports so that they would fit together at each corner just like this. Now, you'll notice that I kind of fast forwarded there to show you how the brackets fit together, so let's take a quick step back and stain the bed. After installing the brackets and making sure that it all fit together, I stained all four pieces in Minwax Early American and then I gave it a few coats of clear poly once the stain had dried. Then I carried it inside and put it together. All that was left now was the bed slats. I cut nine three and a half inch wide plywood strips long enough to span the width of the side rails and rest across the supports. Then I cut nine two by twos, the height of the top of the side rail supports from the ground. This will make sense here in a minute, just bear with me. I screwed the two by twos in at the center of each slat and placed these evenly along the bed rail supports. Then I screwed these in place. And at this point it was done and ready for a good nap. I know that this seemed like a big project, and I guess it kind of is, but building beds is more like building several separate projects that all kind of just fit together. The headboard is one, the footboard is another, the rails, then the slats. So hopefully that helps make it a little less overwhelming when you think about building one. If you'd like to build your own in a twin, full, queen, or king size, don't forget to check out the plans that I've linked below with all the dimensions and details. And if you'd like to keep up with how the rest of this matching series comes together, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on all of those upcoming videos. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, happy building.